Hello and welcome to Pro Trader Strategies Market Commentary for Friday, August the 11th. My name is Eric Wilkinson. Some of you may recognize me as the Wolfman from CNBC, Fox Business, or even the Wall Street Journal. For my commentary on everything from economic to geopolitical and market analysis, please keep in mind that everything that we talk about in these market commentaries is not a solicitation to buy or sell any of these securities or strategies. At the end of the day, we're here to teach you some different strategies you can implement into your portfolios, but please do that in your own way. The reason why I can't give you a recommendation on a particular stock or strategy is because I don't know your risk parameters. I don't know what's in your portfolios and therefore what I'm doing could be counterintuitive to what you are already doing. And please remember the past performance of any trading system or methodology is not necessarily indicative of future results. Having all that out of the way, let's get this on. Not a whole lot of real important data coming out of uh, the European area. Um, we did get a couple of CPI numbers, but it's not their flash CPIs, which is the more important number to look at. But here in the United States, we did get our CPI, which is Consumer Price Index, month over month, came in at 0.1%, uh, was expected to be a 0.2%, so slightly lower than expected there. And then core uh, CPI, which is a little bit more widely looked at uh, because it strips out food and energy, which are some of the more volatile aspects of that data point. Uh, and it came in at 0.1% uh, and was expected to be 0.2%, so slightly lower than expected on both those fronts. Uh, anyway, on to the overall markets. We've got crude oil coming off a little bit, down 26 cents after yesterday's big sell-off. You know, late in the day, as soon as I got this market commentary out there to you guys, the market really uh, accelerated to the downside. As most of you may know, Dow was down like 200 points on NASDAQ. Uh, down over well over a hundred uh, anyway uh, and crude oil fell off as well but right now we're kind of holding our own seems like a could be a bottom here for crude oil if it looks like you know stays looking this way uh, don't really see it moving too much until we get more data out but uh, we'll talk about the equities here in a minute uh, but as of right now, uh, markets are acting the way they probably should be. Gold futures up two dollars, almost three dollars now. Uh, you know, it was a flight to safety yesterday. As the equities sell off, people put money into gold that was making gold move higher. It is going to find resistance here at uh, this level right here at around you know twenty or thirteen hundred. Let's call it. Uh, and I talked about this. You know, that was going to be a major resistance area, kind of somewhat lined up with the value area high and then these tweezer tops here that was going to be a major uh area of resistance for the bulls to try and get through and it, and it kind of showed up today anyway it didn't quite get there yesterday but today uh act showing that resistance there uh on to the bonds you know bonds had a big move yesterday they just had to with the big sell-off in the equities um today taking a little bit of breather right now unchanged on the day uh, but yesterday was pretty much a flight to safety and again I'm, I've talked about this many times I don't see it going outside of probably you know this trend between here and this value area high so uh, we have a couple of Fed governors speaking Kashikari and uh, Kaplan are speaking today uh, Kaplan's probably done speaking but Kashikari's getting ready to uh, probably talk right now um, and then on to the Dow Jones Industrial Average it's up about 43 points inside of yesterday's move obviously with that big move yesterday uh, it, but not really getting a whole lot of uh, clarity out of the charts today for the next move um, to me it almost looks like it's a breather it's a quiet day it's you know a Friday in the summertime Kids are starting to go back to school, but um, you know it's still kind of a rush to the Hamptons, as we used to call it on the floor, where the volume just kind of dies at the end of the day uh, or in the afternoon. But uh, inside day here, up 43 points, but could just be profit taking from yesterday's massive sell off. Here's the NASDAQ up 31 points, um, back above that 50 day moving average. We kind of cut through that like butter yesterday when I did the market commentary it was looking like it was acting a bit of support but then later on that day the market just kind of free fell and ripped right through that 
back above that 50-day moving average. So that's a win for the uh, bulls. But, you know, anytime you have this inside, it's just really not telling you a whole lot it, to me. It's, uh, it could be the dead cat bounce in a sense where the market has a slam, you get some profit taking going. But right now is the time to start taking advantage of some high implied volatility if you have some margin. I've been uh, doing that also in my account. Uh, E-mini S&Ps, this one even gives a little bit more of a clearer picture. It's 50-day moving average acting as a major or as resistance right now. I shouldn't really say major, but um, you know this volume node right here is going to be somewhat of a magnet. Anytime you get the massive volume nodes there, uh, that's going to act more as a magnet um, because this down here these volume nodes are so old that they're they're starting to lose a little bit of their uh, magnetism if you will um, but this is what I'm talking about this kind of looks to me like it, it it really isn't making a bottom necessarily sorry I've got a couple of dogs crying in the that are locked in my office I guess uh, and it's going to be determined tomorrow uh, or sorry Monday uh, if we kind of trade below this it's going to look like there's a continuation going on but it doesn't look like it's you know found the bottom necessarily with the way the charts set up right now uh, and then this is what I was talking about yesterday after the market commentary we just got slammed down uh, market taking a nice bounce today overnight lows uh, have not been printed in the day session so you know that's something to uh, keep a mi uh, mindful or a watchful eye on uh, but today we're getting somewhat of a bounce there as you can see uh, Facebook so uh, taking advantage of high implied volatility Facebook has over a 50 IV percent um, so I decided to take advantage of it remember they came out with really good earnings spiked on that uh, and then basically have since continued to sell off uh, since that day so i decided to go in there and take advantage of the high implied volatility spike that we got throughout the vix vix really spiked as well uh but i went into the september sold the uh 150 185 strangle so the 150 puts the 185 calls and collected 91 cents for that so i'm outside of that range the 150s are well down here so that would be a massive correction to get to those that's the beauty in the high implied volatility. When you get that huge spike in implied volatility, you can take advantage of it and get quite a ways away. I mean, 185 is $10 higher than the all-time high and 150, well, uh, it's well down here, but it's also below the value area high. So that will act as a support area. So um, then on to XLK, XLK, you know, the tech sector got decimated yesterday with the whole sell-off in the NASDAQ and the broader markets for the most part. So I decided to take advantage of some of that high implied volatility in there. The ETFs, as you can see, have the high implied volatility and it's up into the 70s. So that's really high implied volatility for um, an ETF. So perfect time to get in there and take advantage of that. So with XRT, I did... Uh, more of a bullish strategy by selling the September uh, 55 puts in there for 56 cents. So the 55 puts is below the value area high. Uh, that should act as support if it were to continue to sell off on Monday. Um, but as of right now, that's I'm pretty happy with that location, that trade location there. And then on to XRT, the retail area, you know, they got crushed as well. Uh, High implied volatility, uh, as you can see, it's starting to come off, but we got that big spike in implied volatility, but I think that some of that vol is gonna come out. I don't see it really consistently going higher right now. Uh, so I went in there and sold the September 38 puts for 62 cents. So, uh, and it also looks like that's a pretty nice little bottom there. So uh, that's another reason why it looks like it could be a little bit of a breather for uh, this. And if we get that implied volatility coming out of those premiums, that will help expedite the uh, getting out of that trade early. So um, anyway, that's about all I got for you guys today. Today's webinar is gonna be on the long put butterfly. Great for high implied volatility. I'm gonna be 
showing you how to put this uh, put butterfly on a round apple because apple has high implied volatility and percent are up and around 83 percent so i'm going to uh, set up the trade around that so if you want to check that out go to protraderstrategies.com or if you want to learn how to do that it's also a, a nice way to do something like a strangle uh it's very similar to the strangle in a sense in an ira so i'll show you how to set that up uh so it's ira appropriate as well okay so if you can't take that take it easy